What's up everybody? Hope you all are doing well today. We're going to be looking at angular momentum. We'll talk about what it is. We'll talk about conservation of angular momentum and then do a couple example problems. All right, let's jump right in. So if you recall, linear momentum we defined as simply mass times velocity. So similarly, angular momentum, we're going to define that as the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. So the units, remember the units for regular momentum was kilogram meters per second. For angular momentum, inertia is kilogram meters squared, and then omega is radians per second. So that's a unit, we do not rename it, so we just stick with this kind of long, long notation. Um, you'll sometimes see radians just simply dropped, and so you, a lot of times you'll just see kilogram meters squared per second. And the symbol that we use to signify angular momentum is L, capital L. So one of the main concepts um, that we'll talk about with angular momentum is the conservation. Remember when we had linear momentum, this was a key idea as well. We would say, for example, P initial equals P final. Well, for angular momentum conservation, it's the same thing. We'll just say L initial equals L final. Remember when we talked about linear momentum, we said there could be no net external force. Similarly, with conservation of angular momentum, there can be no net external torque. And as we do some of these sample problems, we'll talk about uh, when or when there is not a net external torque. So let's do a couple, actually we'll do three practice problems. So let's do the classic ice skater problem. You've probably all seen images of an ice skater um, twirling around with her arms outstretched. She's spinning at a relatively slow rate, and then she brings her arms inward, and she starts to move faster, right? Rotate faster. And so that's the reason why is simply conservation of momentum. So our L initial is equal to our L final. And since we're going I omega equals I omega, notice that when she brings her arms inward, the, ang the angular velocity, sorry, the angular inertia decreases, right? Because her arms are closer to her body. So this is going to decrease, which means then her angular rotation is going to increase. And that's because we're trying to keep the momentum the same. Let's go ahead and do this one. So her initial inertia is 1.4 kilogram meters squared. Her initial rotation rate, now the rate here is revolutions per second. Depending on the problem, you may or may not have to convert this to radians per second. If they just asked, like, what is the angular momentum, you do have to change it to radians per second. Now, since we're asking for kind of the rate of rotation here, unless they specify put it in radians per second, you can just leave everything in revolutions per second. It makes things a little bit easier. So we're going to leave this as revolutions per second. Watch, you'll see what happens within the units when we do this. So when she brings her arms inward, right, she brings them in, that's going to reduce her rotation, uh, sorry, reduce her inertia. That's because, again, like the radius is smaller. All the mass is closer to her body. So that decreases it to 0 0.5 kilogram meters squared. And then we're going to solve for the new rotation rate. So notice the units here. This cancels, this cancels, and you're just left with the revolutions per second. So that's why we can just leave it as is. If our answer, we wanted radians per second, then at some point we'd want to convert that over. So I get an answer of omega of 5.6 revolutions per second. All right, let's move on to question number two. So in the second question, we're going to take a diver. And the diver is going to jump off. And initially, you're going to start out kind of all outstretched. And they're going to start to rotate. Okay. And then 
they're gonna tuck and so they're gonna make it like a little tight little ball here and when that happens hopefully you've seen this before we're gonna rotate faster and I didn't do this but imagine they go back long again in which case they would then slow down before entering the water so I first want to just highlight a concept here so the reason why when we tuck the reason why that this person's going to rotate faster is because of momentum being conserved again, angular momentum being conserved. So similarly to the last problem we just did, when the, the diver tucks, when he tucks, the I is going to go down and omega is going to go up. So a common misconception about this problem is that the reason it ro he rotates faster is because, well, he has potential here, right? And as he drops, he's losing potential, gaining kinetic, okay? But the gain in kinetic is coming from, is coming into linear kinetic. So once he's in the air, there's no, he's not rotating himself faster. There's no net torque on him. Gravity is just kind of acting on the center of mass here, pulling him to the ground pulling them to the water. And so the linear kinetics increasing, the rotational kinetic, well, it is increasing, but not because it's losing potential energy. The reason why it's increasing is because, well, momentum's conserved. So I is decreasing, omega is going to be increasing here. And so that's why he's going to be rotating faster. Let's go ahead and do the uh, the math on this. So the math again is pretty straightforward. So we have a 20 kilogram meter squared, and then omega is going to be 0 0.5 to start with. And then this time it's going to decrease to 8 kilogram meters squared, and then we're going to look for the new rotation rate. So just like before, the units, just whatever units you want to end with, stick with those units. And we get an omega of 1.25 revolutions per second. All right, let's move on to the final question. So let's look at this uh, merry-go-round problem. So in this one, we have a merry-go-round, and we're rotating at a rate of 4 radians per second. So notice this time we are going to be in the radians per second unit. And then we have our kid here, and they're going to stand on the edge, and then they're going to walk towards the center. So predict conceptually what should happen here. So we'll use the equation L initial equals L final, or I omega initial equals I omega final. Now we do have to find the I initial here. So remember, for these merry-go-round type problems, or anytime you have two objects, you're going to find the inertia of each object and then add them together. So for example, the merry-go-round, let's find that. So we'll go eye of the merry-go-round plus the eye of the child. So the eye of the merry-go-round, that's going to be, we're going to model this as a solid disk. So that's going to be 1 half mr squared. So we'll go ahead and do 1 half. The mass is 80. The radius was 4 squared. That gets us 640 kilogram meter squared, 640. And then we're going to do the eye of the child. So remember the eye of the child, that's going to be simply a point mass. So we're going to go mr squared for that one. So the m of the child was 30. And r, we said the child, where was the child? On the edge. So we're just going to assume that's also 4. That gets us 480 kilogram meters squared. So that gives us a total of, let's move this out of the way. That gives us a total of, What's that? 1,120. So that's our I initial, right? 
Now I final notice it's going to be the same thing, um, except now the child's closer, right? So that's going to be 640, the merry-go-round plus, um, let's just do it all here, 30 times 1 squared, since the child's now going to be moving within 1 meter of the front. So that is just 640 plus 30 is 670. Okay. So at this point, then, the problem is going to be pretty straightforward, right? So we're going to go 1120 times the uh, initial omega was, what was it, 4? And I'll write the units, radians per second. I final is going to be 670. And then we're looking for a omega final. And our omega final is going to be... 6.69 radians per second. So one last thing, um, remember this is only true if um, there's no net external torque. And so this is a good problem to kind of point that out. Notice that for this to go faster, anytime there's an acceleration and for it to move up to go faster, right, we're going from 4 to about 6.7, there has to be a torque. Well, that torque is coming from like the child walking. And so as they're walking, they're kind of pushing on it, causing it to move faster, right? But that's internal, that's inside. That's why we can say that there's no net external torque. The torque's inside the system. Now, on the other hand, if we had, let's say we had dad out here and dad is like shoving it, pushing it this way, well, that torque would be external. And you can imagine like, if the child was just standing the same, right, eyes staying the same, but if the dad starts pushing it, then it's going to get faster and faster, right? But that's an external torque, so momentum would not be conserved, angular momentum would not be conserved in that scenario. Hope that helps. Please let me know if you have any questions in class or in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.